Some people say that drinking coffee causes blood sugar spikes and is bad for insulin sensitivity, whereas others say that coffee is actually good for blood sugar control. To get to the bottom of this, I am going over scientific studies on how coffee influences your blood sugar and insulin sensitivity, both for people with and without diabetes. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today I'm going to be talking about how drinking coffee, in addition to having pure caffeine separately, influences your blood sugar and insulin sensitivity, both in the short term, so right after drinking it, and in the long term. And then I'm going to talk about how drinking coffee influences your risk for diabetes, so for developing future diabetes. And then I'm going to talk about whether coffee is good or bad for people who currently have type 2 diabetes. And first I'll be talking about a meta-analysis of clinical trials that looked at how drinking coffee or having pure caffeine affected people's blood sugar and insulin sensitivity right after having that coffee or caffeine. And they found that both coffee and pure caffeine increased people's blood sugar shortly after having them. So even though there was no glucose in the coffee or in the caffeine, so no types of carbohydrates in them, they still increased blood sugar. And interestingly, only pure caffeine significantly decreased insulin sensitivity. So having coffee did not have any effects on insulin sensitivity across all these studies in the meta-analysis. And again, this is still in the short term, so we're just talking about right after having it. But interestingly, it seems like the effects of coffee depend on what you have it with. One study found that when you have coffee with food, whether it's high or low glycemic index, so it doesn't really matter if it's high or low carb or how much it spikes your blood sugar on its own, if you have coffee, with the food, then coffee really has a stronger amplifying effect on blood sugar. So given that coffee is really increasing blood sugar levels in the short term, then it should be bad for blood sugar and insulin sensitivity in the long term, right? Well, one study looked at how coffee drinking influenced blood sugar control over the course of eight weeks. So they had 45 participants have five cups a day of either water, decaf coffee, or caffeinated coffee. And they looked at how these three different manipulations in this experiment influenced people's blood sugar control. And they found that there were no differences in glucose tolerance or insulin levels or insulin sensitivity after these eight weeks or any other parameters of blood sugar control. So it didn't matter if people had five cups a day of coffee or water or decaf coffee. In the end, it was all the same for their ability to control their blood sugar based on all these different biomarkers of blood sugar control. And another randomized controlled trial, this time over the course of 24 weeks, gave participants four cups a day of either coffee or a coffee-like placebo beverage that did not have caffeine. And again, they found no differences in their ability to control their blood sugar. So, so far we can see that coffee increases your blood sugar in the short term right after you drink it, but has no effects on your long-term blood sugar control. So no differences on fasting blood sugar or insulin sensitivity in the long term. It's almost like insulin resistance is not in fact caused by having blood sugar spikes after meals, which we already knew. It's just a very common misconception that having high blood sugar ever, like after eating, is what causes insulin resistance, when in fact that is not what causes insulin resistance. And if you're interested in a full video on that, please let me know in the comments below. But what about in the long, long term, like over the course of years? Could it be that having all these blood sugar spikes from coffee is actually increasing people's risk of getting type 2 diabetes in the long term? And a meta-analysis, along with a bunch of others that agree with it, looked at how coffee consumption predicts the risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the long term. And this meta-analysis included 450,000 people and found that for each additional cup of coffee that people have per day, their future risk of developing type 2 diabetes goes down by 7%. And in fact, one big study that included 17,000 people followed over the course of almost a decade found that people who had seven or more cups of coffee per day had half the risk of developing type 2 diabetes as people who had two or fewer cups of coffee per day. Now, I am definitely not suggesting that you drink that much coffee. The point here is that the more coffee, the better is the very clear effect here in terms of reducing your risk for developing type 2 diabetes. I could never drink seven cups and I never will, and I don't recommend you do if you have any sort of sensitivity to coffee or if you have any heart problems. So please do not go and overdose on caffeine. The point here is there is very strong evidence that drinking coffee is great for reducing your risk of type two diabetes. So why is this the case? Why is coffee so good for type two diabetes risk, especially given that it spikes your blood sugar every time you have it? 
Well, it's not clear yet, we don't really know, but one hypothesized way that coffee might help with diabetes risk is that it contains polyphenols, which are a class of compounds found in plants that are really beneficial for all sorts of systems in our bodies. But what about if you already have diabetes? What does coffee do then? Well, unsurprisingly, based on its effects in general, coffee does still spike blood sugar in people with diabetes, which is not so harmless if you already have diabetes. And some of these effects are pretty big. So for example, a systematic review of nine studies found that having coffee spiked people's blood sugar AUC up to 30% in people with diabetes and the amount of insulin they needed up to 50% and decreased their insulin sensitivity by up to 30%. And those numbers are just the maximum of the effects that have been found. So it could very well be that drinking coffee has much smaller effects on you if you have diabetes. But the point here is that given that coffee does increase your blood sugar, it is important to stay on top of that and make sure you're being mindful of your coffee consumption in terms of how it is affecting your blood sugar control if you have type 2 diabetes. And importantly, just because coffee is spiking your blood sugar in the short term, that does not mean that it is making your diabetes worse in the long term. In fact, there's a chance it could even be helping your diabetes in the long term. We just don't know yet because unfortunately there aren't really studies being done on coffee consumption in type 2 diabetes, which is really annoying because there's like a million studies on how coffee consumption predicts long-term risk of getting type 2 diabetes, but hardly anything on people who already have it. So hopefully more research will come out soon on that and then I can share that here. But for now, what this research suggests is if that you have diabetes and you enjoy coffee and you're staying on top of your blood sugar levels, then there's no reason to stop. In fact, it might even help, who knows. And unfortunately, there is even less data out there on type 1 diabetes, so we really don't know much either way in terms of how coffee affects type 1 diabetes, which is frustrating. I realized while editing that we need a recap for the main takeaways from this video. So future Mish here, this time without makeup because it's first thing in the morning and I'm tired and I don't usually wear makeup and I didn't want to put it on for a one minute clip. So takeaways are that drinking coffee transiently increases your blood sugar, so you get a blood sugar spike right after drinking it but that does not affect your fasting blood glucose or insulin sensitivity or anything like that in the long term, or even later in the day, like that night after drinking coffee, you should be back to normal. And in fact, the more coffee you drink, the lower your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And this effect is really strong. However, if you have type 2 diabetes, then it's worth being mindful of how coffee is affecting your blood sugar, particularly because combining coffee with food can cause it to increase your blood sugar, more than you would predict from the food itself. So it can kind of have this amplifying effect. If you found this information or any of my other videos helpful, then please consider supporting me in making these videos either through the Patreon, which is a monthly subscription where you also get access to Q and A's and things like that. And then there's also the GoFundMe, which is for one-time support. And I will put the link to both of those in the description below. And I just wanna say thank you to all of you who are supporting me in making these videos. It really means a lot and it helps to keep me motivated and inspired, so thank you. And if you like this video, please like and share it so we can get this information out there so people can learn about how coffee influences blood sugar control. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.